from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of a new era in database management. Brought to you by Nutanix. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and welcome to this special presentation with Nutanix. We're talking about a new era in database management to help us dig into it. First of all, I have the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Nutanix Era Databases in Business Critical Applications, that is Bala Kuchibutla, and one of our other CUBE alums, Monica Kumar, who's an SVP also with Nutanix. Bala, Monica, thank you most, so much for joining us. Thank you. Great thank to you. be here. All right, so, so first of all, Bala, a, a new era. Uh, I, we, we have a little bit of a pun. You, you've got me with, 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 some, with, with some puns there. Of course, we know that the database for Nutanix Solution is era. So, you know, we, we always like to bring out the news first. Why don't, why don't you tell us uh, what does this mean? You know, what, what is Nutanix uh, announcing today? Awesome. Thank you, Stu. <clears throat> yeah, so today is a very big day for us. I'm super excited to inform all of us and our audience that uh, we are announcing the ERA 2.0 GA bits for customers to enjoy it. It's uh, some customers can download and start playing with it. So what's new with Nutanix uh, ERA 2.0? Uh, as you know, 1.0 is a single cluster solution, meaning the customers have to have a Nutanix cluster and then have ERA in the same cluster to enjoy the databases. But with ERA 2.0, it becomes multi-cluster solution. It's not just a multi-cluster solution. Customers can enjoy database across clusters, right? That means that they can have their always on availability group SQL servers or Postgres servers across Nutanix clusters. That means that they can spread across uh, AZs, uh, availability zones. Now, the most interesting point of this is, it's not just across clusters, customers can place these clusters in the cloud, right? That is AWS, uh, you can have Nutanix cluster in the AWS cluster, and then the primary production clusters maybe on the Nutanix on-prem or enterprise cloud kind of stuff. That's number one. Number two, we have extended our data management capabilities, data management platform capabilities, and what we call them as global time machine, right? Global time machine with uh, data access management, like raising river, that you need to harness the raising river by constructing a dam, and then harness it for multi-purpose, uh, whether irrigation projects or hydroelectric project kind of stuff. You need to kind of do the similar things for your data in the company, enterprise company. It, you need to make sure that the right persons get the right amount of data so that you don't kind of uh, give all production data to everyone in the company. At the same time, they also need the accessibility. With one click, they can get the database, uh, uh, the data they want. So that's the data access management. Imagine a QA person only gets the sanitized snapshots or sanitized database backups for them to create the copies. And then, we are extending our database engine portfolios to, to uh, introduce SAP HANA to the thing. As you know that we, we support Oracle today, Postgres, MySQL, MariaDB, and SQL Server. I'm excited to inform that we are introducing SAP HANA. Our customers can do one click sandbox creation, end-to-end -end environment for SAP HANA today on Nutanix platform. And lastly, I'm super excited to inform that we are becoming a Postgres vendor. We are going to give 24 by 7, 365 days support for Postgres database engine that's kind of uh, provisioned through Nutanix era platform, right? So this way the customers can enjoy the engine platform service all together in one single shot with a single one 800 company that they can call and get the support they want. I'm super duper excited uh, that this is going to make the customers a truly multi-cloud, multi-cluster uh, data management platform. Thank you. Yeah, well, and I'll, I'll just add to that, Stu. Um, it's fantastic that we are now offering this new capability. I just want to kind of remind our audience that Nutanix for many years has been providing the, the foundation, the infrastructure software, where you can run all these multiple workloads, including databases today. And what we're doing with ERA is fantastic because now we are giving our customers the ability to take that database that they run on top of Nutanix to provide that as a service now, right? So now we are talking to a whole different organization here. It's database administrations, it's administrators, it's teams that run databases, it's teams that care about data and providing access to data in organizations. 
Well, first of all, congratulations. I, I, I've talked for a couple of years to the, 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 the teams at Nutanix, especially uh, so some of the people working on Postgres, uh, really exciting stuff. And you know, you've both seen really the, the unlocking of database. It used to be, we talked about, you know, I have one database, it's kind of you know, the one that everything mm -hmm. runs on. Uh, the, the, now customers, they have more databases. You talked about that flexibility as to, to where we run it. Um, would love to hear, you know, maybe Monica, start with you. You talk about, you know, the customers. What does this really mean for them? Because one of our most mission critical, you know, applications we talk about, we're not just throwing our databases. Oh, I, I don't wake up in the morning and say, oh, let me move it to this cloud and put it in this data center. It's, you know, this needs to be reliable. I, I need to have access to the data. I need to be able to work with it. So, so what does this really mean and does, what does it unlock uh, for your customers? Yes, absolutely. I love to talk about this topic. Um, I mean, if you think about databases, they are means to an end, right? And in this case, the end is, you know, being able to mine insights from the data and then make meaningful decisions based on that. So when we talk to customers, it's really clear that data has now become one of the most valuable assets that an organization owns. Well, of course, in, in, in addition to em the employees that are part of the organization and our customers, data is one of the most important assets. But most organizations, the challenges they face is a lot of data gets collected. And in fact, we've heard numbers thrown around for many years, like you know, almost 80% of world's data has been you know, created in the last like three or four years. And you know, data is doubling every two years in terms of volume. Well, guess what? Data gets collected, it sits there. And organizations are struggling to get access to it with the right performance, the right security uh, you know, comp and regulation compliance, the reliability, availability, by persona, developers need certain access, analysts needs different access, line of businesses need different access. So what we see is organizations are struggling in getting access to data at the right time by the right person on the team and when they need it. And I think that's where database as a service is critical. It's not just about having the database software, which is of course important, but how you know, now make that service available you know, to your stakeholders, to developers, to lines of business within the SLAs that they demand. So is it instantly? How quickly can you make it available? How quickly can your users have access to data and do something meaningful with it and mine the insights for smarter business? And then the one thing I'd like to add is that's where IT and business really come together. That's the glue. If you think about it today, what is the glue between an IT organization and a business organization? It's the data. And that's where they're you know, really coming together to say, how can we together deliver the right service so you, the business owner, can deliver the right outcome for our business? That's very true. Maybe I'll just add a couple of comments there. What we are trying to do is we are trying to bring the cloud experience, the RDS-like experience, to the enterprise cloud and then hybrid cloud. So the customers will now have a choice of cloud. They don't need to be locked in a particular cloud. At the same time, enjoy the true cloud utility experience. We help customers create clouds, uh, database clouds, either by themselves if they're big enough to manage the cloud themselves, or they can partner with uh, GSIs like Wipro or HCL and then pre create a completely managed database service kind of stuff. So, this brings this cloud neutrality, portability for customers and give them the choice at their terms uh, too. Yeah. yeah, well, Bala, absolutely. We've seen a huge growth in, in managed services, as, as you've said. Maybe bring us inside a little bit. You know, what does this, what does this free up customers? What, you know, the, the, we've said for so long, that back when HCI first started, it was, you know, some of the storage administrators might bristle because you were taking things away from them. It was like, no, we're going to free you up to do other things that, as Monica said, you know, deliver more business value, uh, not mapping LUNs and doing that. How about from the DBA standpoint? What are some of those, you know, repetitive, you know, undifferentiated heavy lifting that we're going to take away from them so that they can f focus on, on the business value? Yep. Thank you, Stu. So think about this. We all do copy-paste operations in laptops, right? Something of that sort happens in data center at a much larger scale, meaning that the same kind of copy-paste operation happens in databases at Petabytes or terabytes of scale, hundreds of terabytes. Now that will that is it has it has become the most dreaded, complex, long-running error-prone operation. Why should it be that way? Why should the DBA spend uh, all these mundane tasks and then get busy for every cloning operation? It's a two-day job for me. Every backup job, it's like a half-day job for me. Provisioning takes like three days. We can take this undifferentiated heavy lifting by this 
and then let the DBS focus on designing the cloud for them, or looking for the database tuning, database design, data modeling, uh, or AI ML aspects of the data kind of stuff. So we are freeing up the database ops people uh, in a way that they can design the database cloud and make sure that their energy focus on higher order value things and more towards the business centric kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah, and you know what, automation is really important here. What Bala is talking about is automating mundane grunt work. Like IT spends 80% of its time in maintaining systems. So then where is the time for innovation, right? So if we can automate stuff that's you know rep repetitive, stuff that the machine can do, the software can do, why not? And I think that's what our database as a service you know, offering does. And I would add this, you know, the, the big thing our database as a service does really is provide IT organizations and DB organizations a way to, um, to manage heterogeneous databases too. It's not like, you know, here's my environment for Postgres, here's my environment for MySQL, here's my environment for Oracle, here's my environment for SQL Server. Now with a single offering, a single tool, you can manage your heterogeneous environment across different clouds, on-premises cloud or in a public cloud environment. So I think that's the beauty we are talking about with Nutanix's era, is it really, truly gives organizations that single environment to manage heterogeneous databases, apply the same automation and the ease of management across all these different envir environments. Yeah. I'll, I'll just add one further comment too, that uh, a true managed pass, obviously customers enjoy a, like a single shop, go to public cloud, just click through and then they get the database endpoints and then someone is managing the database for them. But if you look at the enterprise uh, data centers, they need to bring that enterprise governance structure to these databases. It's not like anyone can do anything to any, uh, all these databases. So we are kind of getting the best of both, the, the needed enterprise governance by these enterprise people, at the same time bringing the convenience for the application uh, teams and developers. They want to consume these databases like utility. So bringing the cloud experience, bringing the enterprise governance, at the same time, I'm super confident we can cut down the cost. So that is what Nutanix era is all about across all the cloud, in, including the enterprise cloud. Yeah. Well, well, Bala, uh, being simpler and being less expensive were one of the original promises of the cloud that don't necessarily always uh, c come out there. So, so that's super important. One of the other things, you, you talk about these hybrid environments. It's not yeah. just that it's in the public cloud. Want to understand you know, these environments if I'm in the public cloud, can I still leverage some of the services that are in the public cloud? So if I want to run some analytics, if I, I want to use some of you know, the, the phenomenal services that are coming out every day, is that something that can be done in this environment? Yeah, beautiful. Thank you, Steve. So we are seeing customers to two categories. There is a public cloud customer completely born in public cloud, cloud native services. They realize that for every database, they're maintaining five or uh, seven different copies, and the management of these copies is co prohibitive, just because every copy is a full thick copy in the public cloud, meaning you take a backup snapshot and restore it, your meter like New York taxi, it starts running for your EBS and uh, whatever the task that you're looking at it kind of stuff. So they can leverage Nutanix clusters and then have a highly efficient cloning capability so that they can cut down some of these costs for the secondary environments that I talk about, right? What we call this copy data management. That's one kind of use case. The other kind of customers that we are seeing whose cloud is a phenomenon. There's no one, in, in, there's no way that people how to move to cloud. That's the, something at a C-level mandate that happens. These customers are enjoying their database experience on, on our enterprise cloud. But when they try to go to these big hyperscalers, they are seeing the disconnect that they are not able to enjoy some of the things that they are seeing on the enterprise cloud with us. So this transition, they are talking to us, can you get this kind of functionality with Nutanix platform onto some of these big hyperscalers? So there are kind of customers moving both sides. Some customers are in public cloud, they're trying to enjoy our facilities, other uh, copy data management on Nutanix. Customers are on-prem, but they have a mandate to go to public cloud with our hybrid cloud strategy, they get to enjoy the same kind of convenience that they are seeing it on, uh, on, on enterprise and bring in the same kind of governance that uh, they used to do it. So that's, that's the way we see customers, yeah. Yeah. 
Monica, I want to go back to something you talked about. Customers dealing with that, that heterogeneous environment that they have uh, reminds me of a lot of the themes that we talked about at, at Nutanix.next uh, because customers have, they have multiple clouds they're using. Uh, it requires different skill sets, uh, different tooling. Uh, it's that, that simplicity layer that, that Nutanix has been uh, working to deliver since day one. Can you talk, to, what, what are you hearing from your customers? You know, how are they doing with this? And, 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 you know, especially in the database world, what are some of those you know challenges that they're really facing uh, that that we're looking to help solve with this solution today? Yeah, I, I mean, if you think about it, you know, what customers, at least in our experience, what they want or what they're looking for is this modern cloud platform that can really work across multiple cloud environments because people don't want to change, you know, running let's say an Oracle database here on prem on, on a certain stack and then using a whole different stack to run Oracle database in the cloud. What they want is the same exact foundation. So, be, so they can be, you know, for sure have the right performance, right? Availability, reliability, the applications don't have to be rewritten on top of Oracle database. They want to preserve all of that, but they want the flexibility to be able to run that cloud platform wherever they choose to. So that's one. So that's the, you know, choosing the right and modernizing and choosing the right cloud platform is definitely very important to our customers, but you nailed it on the heads too. It's then about how do you manage it? How do you operate it on a daily basis? And that's where our customers are struggling with multiple types of tools out there, you know, custom tool for every single environment. And that's what they don't want. They want to be able to manage simply across multiple environments using the same tools and skill sets. And again, I know I'm going to beat the same drum, but that's when Nutanix shines, that's our design principle, is it's the exact same technology foundation that we provide to customers to run any applications. In this case, it happens to be databases. Exact same foundation you can use to run databases on-prem, in the cloud, and then on top of that, using ERA, boom, simple management, simple operations, simple provisioning, you know, simple copy uh, data management, simple patching, all of that becomes easy using just a single framework to manage and operate. And I will tell you this, when we talk to customers, you know, what is it that DBAs and database teams are struggling with? They're struggling with SLAs and performance on scalability, that's one. Number two, they're struggling with keeping it up and running and fulfilling the demands of their stakeholders because they cannot keep up with how many databases they need to keep provisioning and patching and updating. So at Nutanix, now we are actually solving both those problems. With a platform, we are solving the problem of a very specific SLA that we can deliver in any cloud. And with ERA, we are solving the issue of that operational complexity. We're making it really easy. So again, IT stakeholders, DBAs can fulfill the demands of the business stakeholders and really help them monetize the, the data. Yeah, I'll just add on with one concrete example too. Like we have a big financial customer uh, they want to run Postgres. They are looking at the public cloud. Can we do a managed services kind of stuff? But you look at this, that uh, the difference, the cost difference between running a Postgres on your compute infrastructure versus managed services is almost like 3x to 4x dollars, right? Uh, yeah. Now, with Nutanix platform and ERA, we were able to show that they can do at much reduced cost, right? Mm -hmm managed database service experience, including their DBA cost or including the cloud administration cost. Like we added the infrastructure, we added the people who are going to manage the cloud, internal cloud, and then end-to-end -end experience being plus plus of what they can see in the public cloud. That's what makes the big difference. And th this, is, this is what data sovereignty, data control, compliance, and enterprise structure governance, all these things coupled with cloud experience is what customers really see the value of ERA on the enterprise cloud. And with an extension to the public cloud with, with our hybrid cloud strategy, if they want to move this workload to public cloud, they can do it so today with AWS clusters and tomorrow with our Azure clusters. So that gives them that kind of insurance, uh, not getting locked in by a big hyperscaler, but at the same time, enjoy the cloud experience. That's, that's what uh, big, big customers are looking for, yeah. All right, and, and Bala, all, all the things you, you laid out here, what, what, what's the availability of ERA 2.0? ERA 2.2 ERA is actually available today. The customers can enjoy, download the beats. We already have a bunch of beta customers who are trying it out, either, whether you call big telco com companies or financial companies, or even the big um, ma companies that manage uh, big pensions kind of stuff. Let's, let's talk about that kind of stuff. People are looking to us, 
In fact, there are customers who are looking for uh, when is this available for Azure cluster so that we can move some of our workloads to and manage the uh, databases in the Azure clusters too. So it is available and I'm looking forward to great feedback from our customers and um, uh, hoping that it will solve some of their major critical problems and, and in, the, in the process, uh, they get the best of, of uh, Nutanix. Yeah, uh, Monica, uh, last question I have for you. This doesn't seem like it's necessarily the, the same traditional infrastructure go to market uh, for, for a solution like this. If I, if I think back to, you know, people think of HCI, it was like, oh, well, it's, it was kind of a new box. We know Nutanix is a software company. More of what you do today is subscription uh, based. So maybe if you could talk a little bit to, to just how Nutanix goes to market uh, with a solution like this. Yeah, and you know what, maybe people don't realize it, but I'm hoping a lot of people do that Nutanix is not just an infrastructure company anymore. In the last many years, we've developed a full cloud platform. Not only do we offer you know, the infrastructure services with hyper-converged infrastructure, which is now really the foundation, it's the hybrid cloud infrastructure. As you know, we, Stu, we talked to you a month ago, and we talked about the evolution of HCI to really becoming that hybrid cloud infrastructure. But in addition to that, we also offer other data center services around storage, DR, uh, networking. We also offer DevOps services with application you know, provisioning, automation, application orchestration, and then of course, database services that we're talking about today. And we offer desktop services. So Nutanix has really evolved uh, in the last few years to a complete cloud platform, really focusing on the applications and workloads that run on top of the infrastructure stack. So not just the infrastructure layer, but how can we be the best platform to run your databases, your end user computing workloads, your analytics applications, your enterprise applications, cloud native applications. So that's what this is. And you know, databases is one of our most um, successful workloads that's, that runs on Nutanix very well because of the way the infrastructure software is architected. Because it, you know, it, it's really great to scale, high performance, because of, again, our superior architecture, and now with ERA, it's, it's a tool, it's all in one. Now it's also about really simplifying the management of databases and delivering them speedily and with agility to drive innovation in the organizations. Yeah, thank you, Monica, thank you. I, I'll just add a couple of lines of commentary to that. GTM for databases, as you rightly call it, Otsu, is going to be a challenge. And historically, we are seen as an infrastructure company. But the beauty of databases is it's so adjacent to the infrastructure, the storage. So the language slightly becomes easy. And in fact, this holistic way of looking at it, solving the problem at the solution level rather than infrastructure helps us to go to a different kind of buyer, different kind of decision maker. Uh, and we are learning. And I can tell you confidently the kind of progress that we have seen for in one and a half year, the kind of customers that we are winning and proving that we can make a big, we, we can bring a big, big difference to them. Uh, though there is a challenge of GTM speaking the language of database, but uh, the sheer nature of cloud platform, the way the other hyperscalers work, that's the kind of language that we take. You can run your solution, and here is here is how you can cut down your database backup time from hours to less than minute. Here is how you can cut down your patching from 16 hours to less than one hour. It is how you can cut down your provisioning time from multiple weeks to less than a uh, like matter of minutes. That, that holistic way of approaching it, coupled with the power of the platform, really making the big difference for us. And I usually tell every time I meet, can you give us an opportunity to cut down your database cost, the TCO, total cost of operations, by close to 50%? That gets them excited, that lets them move lean in and say, how, how, how do you plan to do it? And then we, we go about how do we do it and we do a deep dive and PC, uh, POCs and all, all the way. So I'm excited. I think this is going to be a big play for Nutanix. Um, we're going to make a big difference. Absolutely, well, Bala, congratulations to the team. Monica, bo both of you, thank you so much for joining. Uh, really excited uh, for, for all the announcements. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank All you. right, stay, stay with us. We're going to dig in a little bit more uh, with one more interview for this product launch of the new era in database management from Nutanix. I'm Stu Miniman, and as always, thank you for watching theCUBE.